Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Elseworlds Exchange, the podcast from me, I'm Sal from Comic Pop, and Joel from Cave Joel, where we talk about comics and pop culture comic related stuff. Today's topic is a Marvel equivalent of the supervillain shakeup episode we did for DC only a few short weeks ago. Um, Joel, mm-hmm. you had this idea from a World Wrestling Federation concept, as I recall. <laughs> it wasn't quite that. It was like 50-50 that. It was half that and half Days of Vengeance. It just so happened to line up with the actual uh, wrestling shakeup that they were doing in the actual draft they were doing. Gotcha. Okay. Well, <laughs> in any case, if you sound, if this sounds in anything like a uh, unoriginal concept, that's because you might remember... 30 years ago when Marvel did this thing called Acts of Vengeance, where their supervillains basically traded superheroes. You saw Magneto fight uh, Captain America and so Mm -hmm. forth. Um, And so we're applying that concept to this. We're not going to be doing cross-company stuff. We're not going to see the Joker versus uh, Spider-Man. You know, it's just going to be within the same universe. If you'd like to see the DC equivalent, check out the episode because it's a really rocking good one. Just write in. We're uh, really proud of that one. Yeah, uh, You can find it in the Elseworlds Exchange playlist or just just, just check it out. Just Google it or YouTube it. Um, so, Joel, I'm sure you have a hefty list to choose from. You had a great dynamite list from DC as well. Oh, um, I thought you were taking point on this one because you were the more Marvel well, we could. guy. I mean, either way. I mean, so the idea is we're just taking like these are these are basically these are practically pitches. These are basically yeah. uh, what would be a cool villain that doesn't normally fight this character and what would arise from it. I know that one of the ones that I liked the most from our last episode was the Batman versus Black Manta concept. Because yeah. it was just like, oh, that's a neat idea. And plus, Gotham has a, is, is neighboring an ocean. There's totally some, some potential there. Um, when it comes to the Marvel... Indeed. And so many cool gadgets Batman yes. never gets to use. It's true, yeah. We know Batman's got a boat. We know he's got a, uh, like a belt-mounted respirator. Go under the sea. Grab a trident. Mm-hmm. Kick some tail. Um, Indeed. The uh, I guess with, with my pitch, I'm going to go out right out swinging. Um, there's always going to be, uh, for this team, it's Fantastic Four, they're usually used to fighting one character. Um, you know, Doctor Doom, Mole Man. Uh, Annihilus. Annihilus. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna stay, stick to type, although I'm sure there, it would be fun to see the Fantastic Four versus a team of villains. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, with Magneto on this one. Hmm. Um, I just like the idea of there being another bemetalled suited uh, tyrant who seeks to destroy a team of characters. Um, right. They're also, metal isn't really an essential element in any of the Fantastic Four's team. Uh, no. Like, arsenal. So it would be fun to see him be like, oh, crap, I can't just Wolverine any of you. <laughs> No, he really can't. He could probably pick up Herbie the robot and throw him at someone. Yes, or turn him into a bullet and stab the thing with it or something. I don't know. But, I uh, like it. But yeah, but it'd be fun to see. I think it's just like, hey, look, watch this. Also, you could then br- bust out the like Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and then you got like, ah, a whole team fight going on. I like it. Uh, Will I am golden already in the super chat saying Spider Man versus Magneto, which we have seen not only recently in the Renew Your Vows series, but also in the Acts of Vengeance when Spider Man fought Magneto when he was imbued with the power cosmic or at least uh, t- uh, attached to the uh, Captain Universe Uni Power, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and he made quick work of Magneto. And Magneto was like, I was not prepared for this, and then just bails. Although, if it was Spider-Man versus Magneto, because he doesn't have organic webbing anymore, he would just be like, I fe- I'm feeling some metal around your wrists. Crush. The end. Um, Magneto is just such a good villain. You could put him up against anyone, and it would make for a great story. Yeah, as long as it had some kind of, like, stakes. And I don't know what the stakes could be. Hell, I'm just talking off the top of my head here, but, like, you know how Magneto loves to, like, create mutant havens? He sure does. How about Magneto decides to go to like the negative zone and create a mutant haven? I mean, the X Men. Don't leave us alone far, here. The you know, X Men aren't too far behind it when they all went to what hell or purgatory when magic. They sure did. When magic took them there. Magneto's like, no, screw. It. We're going to the negative zone. They could bump into a nihilist, and that'd be kind of fun. Hell, that'd be a great new uh, status quo for Magneto. He's battling. He's just constantly battling a nihilist, and like the Fantastic Four show up on their usual routine explorations, and they're like. Oh shit, Magneto and a whole bunch of villains, like a whole bunch of mutants rather. What's going on here? I like it. I like it a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, Amazing Zero also saying, but Sal, Reed does machines and Ben is a rude dude. 
uh, clutch Ninja Turtles parallel for the uh, Fantastic Four. But uh, yeah, it's true. Reed does do machines, but because he is like Batman in terms of preparation, I feel like most of these machines have some kind of like anti-magnetic coating or something. Space age polymer. Exactly. Uh, so, and, well, and you know, but Ben would get, would would still punch Magneto, and it'd be pretty. Cool. <laughs> it uh, would be. But Joel, do you have any other ideas besides uh, besides uh, that one? Yeah, well, it's funny. I, I also had a Magneto pitch. Uh, Magneto versus Black Panther, because again, loves his metal and everything. What if he went to Wakanda? I think you could write a hell of a story around Magneto and the Brotherhood go to Wakanda. Oh hell yeah! Um, plus, you get to have. I, I'm sure that I've never actually seen Magneto manipulate vibranium before. I, I know, think right? He can. It, it feels like something that they would have tried before at some point, right? Yeah, and since T'Challa's suit is vibranium, like he'd be kind of screwed. Um, but I, I, I do agree with that concept. I think that's awesome. I mean, yeah. Uh, especially because, hell, you could also trade that whole idea. Magneto's like, no, I'm gonna seek asylum in Wakanda. Exactly. And then T'Challa's like, uh, no. <laughs> Not on my watch, you don't. Get the fuck out. He's like, but we're so much alike, you and I. You fight against, you know, colonial influence. You know, me and my people just want a place that we can be free. Exactly. Yeah, but you're evil about it. That's right? What... No, I, I love that idea. Uh, Heartless Fang and, jumping in. Oh, sorry, go ahead. And then Magneto can be like, yeah, but you know, you keep yourself behind these walls and everything. You kill anyone who ever does you wrong. Are we really so different, T'Challa? <laughs> exactly. Um, it'd be also kind of dope to see him being like, to see T'Challa being like, no, you know what? You're not wrong. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, and then the twist that follows there. Uh, Heartless Fang says, has Spider-Man ever fought Sabretooth? Yes, he has. Uh, mm-hmm. Or better yet, have him fight Kane since Kane fought werewolves once in his little series. That's he true. surely did. Um, Kane versus Wolf, versus Sabretooth would be raw and awesome because Sabretooth is like hardcore and so is Kane. Plus, Kane's got the stingers, so you know that'd be a pretty uh, dr- knockdown, drag out, tooth and claw kind of fight. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Wolverine or uh, Sabretooth and Spider-Man did fight. In fact, when, no, it was Puma. I was thinking oh, of uh, Puma slashes Spider-Man's organic suit, uh, the alien costume, and then it's when he discovers that it's actually organic because of the sensitivity in the claws. Mm. But Sabretooth does fight uh, Spider-Man in a black suit, um, and it, it goes about as well as you'd expect. Um, <laughs> it is pretty cool, though, because they were really pushing the envelope with Sabretooth back then anyway, so there... It, uh, you have seen it, but I would like to see it again because you got heightened senses, you've got uh, Sabretooth's mm. uh, increased agility, and... Just because a big shout out to Kane because he wound up becoming like an MVP of a character. He did. Of, he kind of got sold short. Is Sabretooth a villain again? Because I know we were talking about this. He flips back and forth so much on the alignments. I feel like no, but it's it's inevitable at this point. Right. Yeah. I mean, as a, I think like I dropped off reading Weapon X, but I think the last issue was like, oh, now Sabretooth is leading Weapon X because we're kind of sidelining old man Logan because we don't know what to do with him anymore. Exactly. Um, I feel like any Spider-Man villain would have great crossover potential oh, with, yeah. with any street-level villain um, and give them a run for their money because Spider-Man's done it a thousand times. So if you fought, Absolutely. you know, if you, if you threw, like, Electro at Luke Cage, you'd have him at least have to figure out how to beat Electro. But, yeah. Uh, but one I really like, and it's uh, I've seen it echoed in the chat as well, is having Green Goblin battle with Daredevil. Yeah, we talked about this briefly in the other one. It is a fairly decent matchup. Yeah, you got a crazy industrial. It's basically just Kingpin versus Daredevil, only he can actually go outside and fight Daredevil in a cool costumed battle, which is something I really want to see. Also, Norman Osborn almost became like a Marvel Universe villain after Mm -hmm. the events of Dark, uh, Dark Avengers and everything, Dark Reign. Uh, And I was sad to see him kind of relegated back to nothing. Uh, slash Dan Slott's pet project. And now that he's Red Goblin, you know they're going to get rid of the Carnage symbiote. You know he's going to go back to being Norman Osborn. You know he's going to go back to being the Green Goblin. So, like, that's not the new status quo for him. We're not going to see him be Red Goblin for, like, five more years. Yeah. Um, And it would be nice to see him go, you know what, I fought Spider-Man to a standstill a thousand times. Like, let me try my luck elsewhere. Or let me just try being a crazy industrialist and have him come to blows with daredevil i think that'd be pretty dope it would i mean it helps too that you know one of people's most fondly remembered daredevil stories is also a time where he fought a spider-man villain in quentin beck yes yes that was and it was a great idea that was almost 
the broaching our concept where it's like, yo, Very much Mysterio's so. like, I can't beat Spider-Man, but maybe I can beat Daredevil. Like, hey, how about having like Doctor Doom go like, yo, I can't beat the Fantastic Four, but maybe I could take on the X-Men. You know, like that'd be pretty cool. As we mentioned before, too, in the previous episode, you brought up uh, he doesn't use it as much anymore. But Norman Osborn had the whole, you know, uh, sense altering gas and everything. And for a character like Daredevil, whose powers are so directly tied to his senses. Yes, absolutely. Oh, my God. No, no. uh, Gobby's got spider sense knocking out pumpkin bombs. He's got sensory deprivation gas that could absolutely mess with Daredevil senses to the point where I mean, God, I'm just thinking about Mark Wade's Daredevil run and how like. He would have absolutely tackled that thing, and it would have been... He would have really killed that dope. one. Comic Goblin saying, hey guys, showing some love. I would love to see Iron Man versus the Red Skull in a miniseries, or Iron Man versus Steve-El would be crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. Rock. Um, evil Steve Rogers, that is. Um, yeah, I'd like to see uh, Iron Man versus the Red Skull. I feel like Red Skull has only ever been a Captain America villain. He did. It's true. He had like the smallest cameo in a Spider-Man book at one point, but it was never. He, like... he messed with the X-Men at the beginning of Uncanny X-Men when he uh, what is it took uh, took Xavier's brain and he had psychic powers for a bit. Yes, and then when he became the Red Onslaught. Yes, that also happens. That might have been the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It uh, wasn't great. But. Uh, I was very excited for the idea. And when I, when that first happened, when he's like, when he becomes, when he takes over Professor X's mind, I really thought we were going to get a moment where, when they revealed Onslaught, that Onslaught's like, I've been waiting for the right time to flourish. Get the crap out of here, Schmidt. Onslaught's back. And then do like I'm an Onslaught charge. sequel, but like, no. It's just Red Skull aping off of Onslaught's uniform and they, just being big. They buried the lead with Onslaught so hard, too. Yes. Because he was gone been, after, like, the first three issues. I know. Would have been really cool. What a waste of time. Um, but uh, Will I Am Golden saying, this is not a hero versus villain, but Apocalypse versus Thanos. I'm shocked we haven't seen that before. Same, because Thanos loves talking to guys like Mephisto and loves, you know, measuring up against other villains. How have they never done Thanos v. Apocalypse? I've also really never seen a good Apocalypse versus the Avengers slash Marvel Universe story. Mm, since yeah. Apocalypse is supposed to be the harbinger of the worst timelines of all time. Like, why is it always that whenever it's an Apocalypse level event, I mean, we all know why. It's because it's it's always going to be in the pages of X-Men. So always. in order to not marginalize them, we have to make the X-Men the only survivors. But like... It doesn't make sense as a, as a Marvel reader back in the day for me whenever I would see like, oh, my God, Apocalypse took over the future. And look at this grave, uh, gr- this grave site full of headstones with your favorite Marvel characters names on them, yep. but none of them being X-Men. <laughs> I know, right? That seems it seems like a no brainer. Also, too, tying a little Egyptian mythology there and be like, you know, uh, Apocalypse sees Lady Death and goes, Anubis, is that you? Uh, that'd be dope. Are you kidding me? Um, that's that. Uh, you know what? You you slap like name like Donny Cates on there. You got yourself a f- six issue miniseries that cannot miss. At um, least. Incidentally, I would also like to toss out Apocalypse versus the Avengers because also fun. Why not? Do your biggest baddest event. On Earth, or if you want to do something really, really cool and off the wall, have Apocalypse go to space, like uh, like Ultron and Annihilus and everything. Like, send Apocalypse into space and have him deal with the Guardians of the Galaxy or, uh, you know, or something to that effect. Feels feels like he can't lose. Uh, I had one here, just a straight-up slug match kind of fight. Yep. The Hulk, because, I mean, really, who hasn't the Hulk fought? The Hulk has True. fought just about everybody. Versus Mangog, basically the doomsday of Thor lore, who they brought back and really upped in strength, destroyed all of Asgardia. They had to sacrifice Mjolnir to get rid of him. Yeah. That'd be a cool fight. I'm actually shocked that they didn't strong-arm Aaron into working him in for the Ragnarok connection. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, they just killed him, but, like, nobody stays dead forever. Absolutely. N- not the least of which the Hulk, who is now the Immortal Hulk. Right. Oh, my God. No, that'd be pretty dope, actually, to bring Mangog back and have him be the immortal or unkillable Mangog versus the Immortal Hulk. Like, match of the century. Now you're selling it. Uh, That's a thing right there. It'd be like, man, God, you know, I, I hate all gods. I hate, you know, everything that they're related to. And the Hulk being like, I'm just a fucking scientist, man. I'm a oh, gala yeah. monster. Or man, God being like, I hate gods, but you're worse than one. Like, ah, um, because you think you're a man, but you're not. Yeah. Uh, Chase Eichler says uh, Craven versus the Marvel Universe, which would be epic. That's like mm-hmm. a, in the style of like Punisher versus the Marvel Universe. That got me thinking, 
wouldn't it be cool to see Craven versus the Punisher? It would be because you think about it, Craven. It's like he's doing a lot of illegal hunting. He's doing a lot of poaching and stuff. I'm sure Frank doesn't like that. Yeah. Well, hell, like I've argued that they've never done anything worth a damn with the with Craven the Hunter since they brought him back. That there's never it's been true. a story with Craven that like warrants undoing Craven's last hunt. And so, uh. if you're not gonna do anything with Craven that is distinctly Craven the Hunter, then like evolve or grow his character. Make Craven the Hunter into a drug runner Help. or like or a poacher that sells pelts that he shouldn't like, but make him into like an actual of endangered animals and shit. Yeah. yeah, like make him into a crime lord or something. Um, make him the ha- new kingpin, for God's sake. That would be super awesome. And in fact, you, you, you really hit the nail on the head when you say that they've done nothing worth undoing uh, Craven's last hunt. If anything, they played him for laughs in his last little appearances. He fought Squirrel Girl and fought Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> right. Which, I mean, I guess that makes sense because they're animals. Yeah. But no, do something cool and dignified with Craven. I loved the idea. Craven's last hunt, if you never read it, go back, check it out. It's Excellent. basically, it was. It was a great old school uh, Spider-Man story. You get the black costume. You get it's very short, um, and it's really dark. And it's basically, by the way, a director from Marvel uh, editorial that said to G- Mateus, "Dark Knight Returns up Spider-Man." Yeah, it's it's arguably one of the best Spider-Man stories ever told. Yeah, it's one that they've like apparently been talking about making into a movie forever. Which like I'm like, really? Are we in that place now? But apparently, like, I, would, I guarantee you, we, we we will see it at some point. Um, but yeah, do something cool with Craven. Uh, what else you got, man? Uh, well, uh, again, you know, we mentioned Red Skull a while back yeah. there. Wouldn't it be cool to see Red Skull fight Miss Marvel, or at the very least, Miss Marvel and the champions? Because it's like, oh, oh, all you young, diverse youth, I really don't like you. Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah, having like basically the the woke squad versus an actual literal Nazi, literal that immortal. That's a slam dunk. That's like, hey, you're welcome, guys. That, that actually is so on the nose, I'm surprised Mark Waid didn't already do it. <laughs> well, I was going to say, in the G. Willow Wilson run, uh, she fought Dr. Faustus and she fought uh, Hydra Sleep Agents, but never actually fought the Red Skull himself. Oh, you gotta like, get the Red Skull in there. And again, like he could he could turn up the level too, being like, "Oh no 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 no, you fought my weakest henchman before, children. I am the realest deal." Yeah. Incidentally, another cool uh, team versus single character I'd like to see, and I know I've mentioned this team before, but I'd like to see it anyway. The Taskmaster battling the X-Men. Oh, yes, because they have so many abilities and he can recreate it all. He's got the ability to recreate their abilities. They both run schools. Um, yeah. The, <laughs> while it's they a really tangential do. connection, it'd be fun to see him being like, no, 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 I snuck into a, to Xavier's school. Uh and I want to see what this is all about. I've never actually aped off of you guys before. Um, but I'm going to. Su- oh, God. No, I was done. Okay. Cam in the super chat saying Wolverine versus the Abomination would be cool. Yes. Um, yeah, it'd be like, a, well, it'd be Hulk versus Wolverine, only re- only we, he might actually die. Like Yeah, I was going to say. And Punisher versus Nuke. Uh, I was going to say we've seen it, but th- I was thinking of Nuke's debut in Daredevil Born Again, which yeah. is Daredevil versus Nuke. Shockingly, we have never seen Punisher versus Nuke. I would say put him up against any of the super mercenaries. Uh, Bushmaster, that would be another one. The Moon Knight villain. I'm surprised he's never fought Punisher. Or Bushman, who's going to be in Luke Cage. Yes. Hell, any Spider-Man villain versus Moon Knight would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be pretty fun. Again, Green Goblin versus Moon Knight would be cool. You're crazier than me. (laughs) That would be fun. Mysterio oh. versus Moon Knight would be a thing where it's like, ooh, is this an illusion or are you just nuts, Mark Spector? I That'd guess you'll never know. Oh, yeah. No, I love that idea. Uh, you can and, also and, you can ape off of the Batman Beyond twist where it's like, oh, how did you know it was an illusion? He's like, because I don't refer to myself as Moon Knight or something like that. You know, In my head, yeah. It would be a thing, too, where it's like Moon Knight completely no-sells Mysterio's illusions where it's like, guy. I'm already insane. This does nothing to me. Right. You make me. You making me think I'm crazy proves to me that you're that someone is messing with me because I yeah, already exactly. know it. <laughs> that um, would be fun. Tevia Smolka says, uh, "Spider Girl versus Purple Man." Mm, I don't want to see would, that. That's so sad. That could get pretty dark pretty quickly. I agree. I would love to see Purple Man versus the Avengers or Purple Man versus any team where you just another one. I'm surprised they haven't done. Yeah, he just rolls in. I mean. The stuff they've done with him with the purple children and everything is like mm. was so distinctly that story for that group. Very I'm, much so. I'm not surprised that they didn't just go like, okay, no purple man for a while. But 
yeah, no, dust off Purple Man, do something cool with him. Because, um, especially the MCU equivalent for Purple Man, I really wanted to see him roll into those movies, and we're never going to do that. No, um, but he gets to exist in our brain a little bit. That's cool. Ultron vs. Annihilus is Jordan Hawkins uh, with the Marvel Universe in the middle. That is a book, like, that's an event that, like, we are probably less than a year away from. And I'm not saying yeah. that because I know this. I'm just saying, like, why aren't they doing this? Where it's like, you call it, like, Battle for the Galaxy or something. And it's just Love it. Ultron and his hordes versus Annihilus and the Wave. Like, I don't get Love it. it. Why, don't they, why haven't they done that already? Um, that would be really, really cool. Yeah, Battle Here's for the a, Negative it, Zone. Here's one for you here, because, you know, what they don't all have to be serious. Some can be funny matchups. Sure. The sinister foes of Spider-Man or the superior foes. Oh, yeah. yeah. The superior foes of Spider-Man versus Alpha Flight. <sighs> yes. That'd be great. <laughs> it would be. And it could be a total thing. Like, they're beating the crap out of each other. Then halfway in, they're like, why are we still doing this? Like, We're, oh. You're not re- by villains as much as we are not respected by other heroes we should team up yeah no i like that idea a lot that'd be really fun like um, the sinister and again too because you have the canadian connection so the sinister foes are like hey if we can escape to canada they can't arrest us there's no heroes in canada oh only God. to be met at the border by alpha flight hey hey where do you think you're going buddy <laughs> oh no they have heroes here lame lame hero <laughs> hey wolverine was on our team buddy yeah for like a minute yeah was <laughs> Uh, that would be fun. That'd be really fun. Oh, dude, what's a prominent Canadian comic book writer that should take that? Uh, uh, Jeff Lemire is probably the most prominent at the, time, at the moment. Who wrote uh, We Stand on Guard? Oh, shit, who did write that? Uh, oh, it wasn't Brian K. Vaughn. Why would I think that? No, uh, Brian K. Vaughn. Oh, it was actually it was him. Brian K. Vaughn. <laughs> Oh shit! I was right. Is Brian K. Vaughn Canadian? I don't know. He might or be. Does he, or does he just really like Canada? He seems pretty friendly, <laughs> which is always a good way to say it. Yeah. By the way, Garrett Kearns uh, saying Craven in space versus Rocket Raccoon. Apparently, they did that already. They did. They fought on Earth. That was during like the whole grounded thing. So I guess you could do like the like Space Punisher, but it's Space Craven. Ah, he'd do a sequel to it. Be like, I will now hunt the deadliest aliens known to man. Bro, like Space Craven is a title that I'm shocked doesn't exist. For real. He's gonna he's gonna fight it, hunt, uh, hunt aliens. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, Brian K. Vaughn is from Cleveland, Ohio. Go figure. But his wife is Canadian. Ah, there you go. There you have it. We, um, we we marry good Canadians. We make good spouses. That's nice. Yeah, I guess I would take that. No, I take well, I take anything by by Brian K. Vaughn at this point. Really, Zadarsky is Canadian because Zadarsky, yes. I'm pretty sure, wrote that uh, Craven Rocket story. Well, that makes sense. Oh no, wait, no, that was Rosenberg, who is also not Canadian. I was thinking his Star Lord book from around the same oh, time. Because okay. Zadarsky would write a hell of a Craven versus Howard the Duck story. Oh, good. another one. Yeah. Again, because they don't all have to be serious. I will hunt the deadliest duck prey known to man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I would do that. Well, who should Captain Marvel fight? I feel like we should do some cosmic stuff there. Who's an interesting villain to put her up against? Yeah, I, I guess. I would say Thanos, but I think that's going to happen in Infinity. I think we're going to see that already. No, I, I mean, like, if you're going to see Captain Marvel versus a heavy hitter, hell, it'd be cool to see her fight Apocalypse. I would love to see her fight mm. a Nihilist, though. That would be cool, too. Again, I, have they told that story? I haven't been reading the current Captain Marvel. Oh, I don't read Captain Marvel, so I don't know. <laughs> not not since the Kelly Sue DeConnick years, me either. No. How about uh, Captain Marvel versus... Uh, oh, I had one on the tip of my tongue, and I lost it there. Was it a single character or multiple characters? Cause yeah, it, it, it was a single character. Because you want to make Captain Marvel relevant and also do a really dope story that a writer is going excited, to get excited to do. Have it be Doc versus Doctor Doom. Yeah, that's always good. Yeah, that's that, that that's the real measuring stick for a uh, for a hero. Can they match wits with Doctor Doom? Well, because every time you're like, ah, oh, but you got to read so and so versus Doctor Doom. There's a great Spider-Man versus Doctor Doom from Eric Larson. I think mm. uh, I think uh, somebody else wrote it though. Uh, but you've also got Doctor Doom versus Black Panther and Doom War. Yeah, um, you know, and of course all the great. Uh, of course, Secret Wars is basically a Doctor Doom story. <laughs> It is. Oh, the chat had a good one there. Uh, Captain Marvel versus Hela. That'd be cool. I don't know where you go with that. Like, give me a, I dare you a pitch for that. Again, I, I imagine it would be like Hela being like, you know, I'm sick of this underworld bullshit. 
hey, you know, I'm going to try and take over space. You got a nice space station there, Carol. I want that now. And, ooh, you could make it like a political thriller thing there where, like, Captain Marvel is afraid to pick a fight with Hela because she doesn't want to incur the wrath of Asgard. That'd be cool. And you could have, like, Thor and all the other characters be like, no, 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 you know, Hela is a Asgardian criminal. She will face Asgardian uh, justice. Do not get involved. Right. Yeah. No, that's that. There you go. There's your central conflict. Um, Jam Call X says, when are you going to hand out Joel Force capes, Joel? <laughs> oh, man, once I can find a tailor and I can make some Joel Force capes, I feel like I should have a cape by now. I'm actually kind of jealous of Tiff because she has several capes that she's had in videos and they've all been great. You know what you got to do? You got to get, uh, in the, you don't make them full capes. You get like beer koozie capes that just go oh. on your drink. You just, and it's basically just a piece of fabric and like some elastic. So it just like Smart. hugs the, like, the ring of your can. Smart. There you go, and it has your logo on the uh, on the back, the way Superman's ass goes on the back. Love it. All right, that's a million dollar industry right there. You you'll get a free one, of course. Oh, thank you. I do appreciate it. Um, I would like to see a uh, a Spider Man versus Bullseye book. Oh yeah, yeah. Because again, here's a guy who's super dangerous and isn't gonna put up with all your talking and all your quipping at him. That's the thing. Like Bullseye is the quintessential Spider Man villain. He is hopelessly insane he is mm-hmm. horribly sadistic he has a costume he's street level based but he also has like an understated power I, yep. I think he i think he reigns i think that'd be really really cool especially because like you wrap it up with spider-man just being like desperately trying to beat this guy and like being pushed to the edge of his of his sanity of his ability to to hold back um because Bullseye isn't, like, abnormally strong. He's just mm, no. really precise. So Spider-Man knows, like, if I lay a good punch in this guy, I will take his head off. So I have to right. be careful, but it's also like he's a psycho. <laughs> he's, like, the worst guy ever. Ooh, he, here's one I was working on if we did another, like, uh, pitch the universe line. Uh, okay, so a team of Thunderbolts, but a very particular team of Thunderbolts made up of all the best shapeshifters in the Marvel Universe, so you'd have Mystique in there, obviously. Right. You'd have the Chameleon, if the Chameleon ever came back to life. He's been dead for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, I haven't heard any good I haven't heard any news about, about Chameleon for a long time. I guess maybe Mysterio there, too. He can change his shape. Who are some other good shapeshifters? Oh, uh, uh, Hulkling, I guess. Yeah, she, yeah he's, a Hulk, he's a shapeshifter. He's a shapeshifter. That that would be that movie. Scroll, and guess. he's a scroll too. Well, here's the thing. It's a team of the best shapeshifters in the Marvel Universe assembled by Tony Stark in secret as a new Thunderbolts group to go to the Skrull homeworld because <laughs> Super Skrull is rebuilding the Empire and we call it Secret Invasion 2 Guerrilla Warfare because oh now God. we're flipping the script and now it's heroes invading the Skrull homeworld trying to make sure that they don't grow too powerful and attack Earth again. Yeah, that'd be dope. I love that idea. I'm, I'm so on board for that. Um, and it would sell like gangbusters because it's called Secret Invasion 2. Absolutely. And the twist would be that when they get to the Skrull homeworld, they're not all evil. Obviously, Super Skrull is like, yeah, you know, let's return the glory of the Empire. Let's, you know, pillage and destroy and everything. But all the younger Skrulls, like the new generation, who are like, yeah, hey, we've been living in secret on other planets and stuff and seeing the universe because our empire was destroyed. Uh, yeah, we have friends and family other places now. We've gotten married. We have jobs and everything. We're not really on board with this whole murder and destruction thing. How about we build the Skrull Empire into, like, a force for good? Right. I mean, the fact that, like, it would be nice to see an even-handed portrayal of the Skrulls since yeah. I've, like, yet to see one. Never. Um, and and I think, yeah, I agree with that. Um, Alex McDade or so or Daid says, uh, "Love your idea for Bullseye and Spidey clashing." Also, I didn't realize Space Craven was something I wanted until now. Absolutely, right? Because they did Space Punisher so well. Like, you get some Joe Jusco art in there. I think it'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, I, man, that's a good one. How how has Venom never fought Ulysses S. Claw before? Right, he's a Sonic based villain. That would be super dope. That seems so obvious. Like, again, in that Mark Wade run, his first thing was like, yeah, we're going to have Daredevil, the dude with super hearing, fight Claw. And I'm like, yeah, that's so smart. Why has that never happened before? Yeah, I agree. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, incidentally, your uh, your infiltration story got me thinking about this one. Um, Moon Knight versus the Hand. Oh, yeah. A bunch of ninjas. They're they're good for anything. Yeah. And it's like a it's like a crazy organization of uh, of silent, insane killers and Moon Knight being kind of like a secret agent 
character type of his of his own thing. I think that'd be pretty cool, particularly if Moon Knight ultimately creates a persona or he just uses one of his he takes over the hand. I like that. That's really good. He meets the beast and the beast is like, Oh, I like you, Mark Spector. You're all right. I got a letter of recommendation from Khonshu, and he says you would be pretty amazing. Um, oh. And then you either have Moon Knight wear a red suit, or yes. you have the hand dress in white. Oh, shit. And then, like, he turns them into a group of anti-heroes where it's like, yeah, they follow Moon Knight now. It's just his orders are super erratic. Uh, or or uh, in, in an effort to flip the – because you want to make the hand change. You want to make the hand look like Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. Well, why would they do that if they were, if, if they were em- uh, emissaries of the Beast? No. When Moon Knight meets the Beast – Conchu like comes out and then you have this fight between the beast and Conchu and Conchu freaking kills the beast. I like that. Then he converts them to the church of Conchu. Exactly. It's like, look, your old god is dead in bullshit. You, you bullshit. You worship my god now. That image of like the bird skull Moon Knight sitting on a throne with a thousand uh, hand ninjas all bowing uh, before him. Oh my god. Dude, dude uh, Max Bemis is writing Moon Knight right now. Let's send him this. Right? Hey, Max. Here's something pretty dope. I we guarantee you it's cooler than whatever you're doing. And it you can call it something like Shadowland 2. Oh, Shadowland 2. Dot, Dark dot, of dot, the moon. But, oh, but good this time. Yeah, Shadowland 2, we're sorry for the first one. Um, Shadowland 2, but it doesn't suck. Yeah, I would not call it Shadowland 2. I'd call it like something, something moon related. I don't know. Bad cool. Moon Rising. Bad Moon Rising. That'd be freaking dope. Apparently, the arc he's got going on right now is called Crazy Runs in the Family. Yeah, that's okay. That's cool. Um, Got to get some Ghost Rider in there. Yeah, we do. A ghost Rider villain. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe Carnage would be cool. That would be interesting because it's like, who's a guy in more need of punishment than Carnage? Yeah. Um, it'd be nice to see a – here's just a pitch for a Ghost Rider story. I just want to see Ghost Rider going on like – I call it like the tour of vengeance or something where Ghost Rider's like, there are too many people who haven't been punished. And he just starts like, and he has his own like mini acts of vengeance where Ghost Rider's oh, just like, nice. I'm going to Latveria. I'm going to wherever Apocalypse is sleeping. I'm going to like, where I'm going everywhere. And I'm just going to. And every issue is someone new he goes to punish. It's basically just Ghost Rider the list or something. <laughs> That's fine by me. Yeah. I'm all right with all of that. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who's a. Uh, Get someone like uh, the Hobgoblin versus Hank Pym because they kind of have a lot in common in the way that they're older dudes and they're constantly changing their identities. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And just like have two geriatric guys just slugging it with each other in the street. Right. Um, I, or no, actually, you know, uh, Hot Roderick Kingsley versus Wasp because they're both fashion designers. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Are they That's really? what they That's funny. Yeah, Roger Kingsley started as like a clothing guy, <laughs> which is like what, what what a weird career trajectory from being a fashion man to being a supervillain. Yeah, right. I'm I'm writing a Hobgoblin video. I'm doing another secret identity. I did the weird and lame history of uh, Jack Lantern, and I'm like, well, now I have to do Hobgoblin as a sequel. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, because uh, yeah, when Jack Lantern shows up like during the height of the Hobgoblin, yes, like, who is Hobgoblin story? So yeah. And he's just Hobgoblin's buddy. Then he finds out, oh, no, wait, that was the brainwash Ned leads. Oh, crap, I've been murdered now by the real Hobgoblin. Yep. And also, I was Hobgoblin for a minute, too, and I had the weird scouter and the blade arms and everything. Uh Uh-huh, mm-hmm. God, Mackendale sucked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tevia also in the Super Chat saying, Spider-Man Peter Parker versus Mephisto to undo one more day. Uh Yeah. Yeah. uh, One day we'll get that. One day. One day. When you become editor-in-chief someday. uh, One day we'll get that story. I'd like to see the return of the X-Men going into into space and getting some more Mm. cosmic level threats. Um, Yeah, yeah. You know, you you usually see this with Mojo. And here's here's this pitch really quick. Mojo versus the Avengers. Oh, yeah. I mean, again, how has that not happened before? Just put the Avengers through, like, another murder world reality show. Exactly. And uh, the X-Men versus the Grandmaster. Another truly great... Hey, it's a contest of champions, but with X-Men, Lord knows we have plenty of them. X-Men contest of champions would sell like gangbusters. Or at the very least, it would be it would be intriguing. Just um, putting those words together. Because then you get, a, you get an opportunity to have a scene where they have to play baseball or football ah. against each other. 
Yes, yes, a million times, yes. Uh, oh my oh, god, I love, I love when they play baseball. I know, me too. I actually just picked up a copy of uh, of, of an of an old uh, Jim Lee X Men, and they're playing baseball. I'm like, ho ho. How have they not done like an uncanny world of sports where it's like a crazy one off Elseworlds tale where all the different superhero teams have to play baseball against each other. It's like, oh, so now we got the New York Avengers versus the New York Heroes for Hire. <laughs> I agree. That is something where it's like, I. if we were living in friendlier times, I would say mm-hmm. that the end of like something like Axis or uh, yeah. Avengers versus X-Men should have ended with like a baseball t- like game where they're like, Wait. I can't believe we've never invited you to do this. I can't believe in all the years that we've lived <laughs> like a, like, Next door to each other, practically, we've never done that. Um, and then, of course, the villains come in and try and ruin it. It's like, oh, and here's the Masters of Evil with that pinch hitter, Red Hulk. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chase Eichler back saying Thanos acquires the Phoenix Force. Yeah, that'd be cool he, to see. His son already did. They already had that story. Thane right. got it. Yeah. But, like, again, disappointing, and who cares? But I actually dug that one. That was also Lemire. That was fun. Okay. Well. It was pretty fun. I do want to see Thanos with the with the Phoenix logo on his chest, though. It would, I mean, basically see Thane. He looked just like him. He even stole his dad's helmet and said, this is mine now. Oh, boo. All right. Well, there you go. I mean, but then I think Thane died at the end of that story. Uh, so. Well, there you go. So there you go, Chase. Go pick up a <laughs> go pick up go, a story. Go pick up that one. It's pretty fun. It happened. Um, you, you, you did Thane just recently on the show. You did his origin and everything that was going on with him. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. He was pretty boring. What a character. What a character. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to go, like, I would love to see the Fantastic Four versus the Kingpin. Mm, yeah. And we might see that now that he's mayor, but, like... It's true. He, he wants to buy the Baxter building, that's why. It's yeah. all a land grab. Right, or uh, every time they try to do something, like, they're, they're stopped by the mayor of New York or by Kingpin. Just seeing, like, two... Two litigious groups mm-hmm. uh, go at each other would be kind of fun. Although that's very, uh, I know that that doesn't exactly sell books, but it does sound like a yeah. fun idea. It'd be great too to see like Wilson Fisk completely underestimate the Fantastic Four. It's like pff, I've got these guys. Like he tries to kidnap their children, and that blows up in his face. Oh, totally. Um, or at the very least, he's like, I'll, you know what? Like Richards is so used to like utopia, where he's like, uh. I create something, and therefore I own it. Well, like. Get ready for my get ready for my 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 worst villain team yet. My entire army of lawyers. <laughs> then, it's the Mr. Burns scene. He presses a button and here's fifty high powered lawyers. Exactly, but then like R- Richards reveals like yeah, what do you think was the first thing I did? I retained the best lawyers in the country. Like <laughs> Matt Murdock, She Hulk. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun. Ah, at the very least, wh- when are we going to see a Matt Murdock versus Jen Walters in the courtroom scene? Uh, they've done that a couple times now. I know, but it's been it's been like played for laughs. It has been. Like, what was it? We didn't see it in um, Civil War Two. That was just a shock. no. Um, but again, I would like to see that. Yeah, I, th- I think we saw it in the. Uh, yeah, we saw we saw it in the Charles Souls one, but yeah, it was played for laughs. It was a case that wasn't actually that big or that important. Mm-hmm. And then I think they went up again in Daredevil, but it was only like a blink and you'll miss it. Right. So it's like, yeah, because that's the thing. For me, the most exciting and interesting parts of Daredevil are the law part. Mm, um, same. It's why the show is – it's my only complaint against the show. I'm like – Is that they don't you, focus on the law stuff. When are you going to win a case, man? It's the cheapest thing. You just have to shoot an episode of Law & Order with the Daredevil scene in it. Like just, that, just the order parts of Law & Order. Yeah, just one, one episode dedicated to an actual trial. You have the scene. You have like the, the sets. Just do it. Um and it's always a waste. Like Matt Murdock's always like, I'm sad that Electra's dead, and I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna go to court. I'm not gonna defend Frank Castle. Like, Come on, not today. It's such a waste. Hey, have the Star Jammers ever uh, met up with the Guardians? I'm sure they have to have had at some point. They did in a uh, Guardians X Men Trial of Jean Grey. Right, that's right. They did, but it wasn't fun or no, to, or about the X or about uh, the Guardians meeting or fighting the Star Jammers, which mm. would be cool. Yeah, and they didn't fight each other, which is also lame. Yes, uh, Noah Batello has Punisher ever been up uh, with? Uh, has have, have bleh, has Punisher ever had to put up with Mysterio's illusions? If not, a need to see Frank get pissed off at Mysterio. Um, no, I don't think they ever have. I don't think I've ever seen that. If I did, it was in Garth Ennis's Punisher kills the Marvel Universe. Mm. Um, 
But That'd be fun because I could see Beck screwing around with him and being like, ooh, I brought your wife and children <laughs> back to life. No, I didn't. Oh, totally. The, I, we we did a, bit, a book on back issues where that pretty much happens and Frank is unfazed. And mm-hmm. I really like it. Um, Ryan Compton, Ghost Rider versus Juggernaut or Cytorak. Mm. Yep. Um, I'd like to see that, I guess. I, I've, I've been trying to think of like a good Juggernaut bout. Yeah, it's rough. It's like he's fought just about everybody. Yeah, and like he's just big, you know. Like and he's not, and he's not as special as he is. Like Deadpool defeated him in like two pages, right. A couple a while back, and I'm like, eh, you're not special anymore. No, uh, Knight Times Three Awe says games says hey, hello, hi. Uh, Will I am Golden Mojo or someone makes a galactic martial arts tournament with the best mm. fighters? i.e. Gamora, Iron Fist, Daredevil, to see who the most dangerous person in the galaxy is. Shang-Chi, you gotta put Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi in there, Chi's too. Shang-Chi's gotta be in there, too. Yeah, I would love to see a, like, a title bout for who actually wins the belt, who is the ta- the dangerous person in the galaxy. Who is the toughest guy, who gets to wear that and say, I am the greatest hand-to-hand combatant in the universe. Yeah, that'd be really cool. And, that, uh, and, yeah. That always bugged me about Lady Shiva in DC. They're like, she's the greatest hand-to-hand combat in, in all of uh, DC Comics. Then why does she keep losing? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen her win a fight. No. But they keep saying she's the best, even though she hasn't won a fight. No. No. Uh, I would also like to see some, like, some Thunderbolts action going on. Mm. I'm surprised you haven't mentioned them too much. Because um, the Thunderbolts, well, and it depends on which ter- which team you're talking about. Absolutely, they're always different. Because I do, I, I have a real affinity for that like short lived, basically red and black team that was red that was oh, led by Red right. Hulk, the anti hero squad. The anti hero squad. Um, I think it was poorly executed ultimately, but it, like, why was it ever? But what a neat idea! Like, I loved the idea of Elektra and Punisher working together. Yeah. Um, I would like to see that as a as a fight, Elektra versus Punisher. Um. Because neither we, both of them are practically dead or have been dead yeah. already, and they both have oh, yeah. like incredible skills. That'd be really fun. Have there ever been a Deadpool versus Electra book? Yeah, no death. No, but I'm sure it's coming at some point right? because he's be fought ready. everybody. <laughs> um, I would also like to see um, the Sentinel program go against something else. Like, mm-hmm. When are we going to see Avenger versus Sentinels or something? That'd be fun. That'd be really fun. Like, even just, like, Iron Man versus Sentinels, where it's like, oh, look at this crappy workmanship. I could totally make this better. Yes. Well, didn't we see an Axis, uh, that, like, Stark made an Adamantium Sentinel or something during the Civil War that was on I, ice or something? Was, was that or was that in Humans versus X-Men where uh, Emma Frost is like, oh, and look, now I have, uh, oh, no, that was in Human Killing Sentinels. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I, I think we've seen both those things, but they're so forgettable and lame. No, mm. I want to see like an Iron Man good. Sentinel or, uh, or, or, you know, Sentinels that are specifically in t- like built to battle with non-mutant combatants. That'd be crazy. You know what's probably going to happen because he's writing it? Tony Stark Iron Man versus uh, Superior Doc Ock. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because here's the thing. No one is going to touch that Superior Octopus character. No. Uh, but Slot will because he likes that character because he created yes. that character. He did and gave him a hell of a history. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I could see that happening. I could see him trying to become the superior Iron Man mm. again. Like, again. Um, but actually be like, no, I could take over your body and you don't, you're not prepared for it. You have no spider sense. No, no, you don't. Um, Tanisha Marshall saying uh, X-23 versus Maestro. Maestro versus anybody, really. Yeah, Maestro versus anybody would be really cool. Maestro versus the Exiles. Maestro versus Kang in a battle of who is the better time traveler. Dude, Time Lords. That'd be freaking awesome. There's there's a thing. Who are some other time traveling people we could throw in there? Put put everything in the pot. Put all right? the time travelers uh, there's in There's that there. Iron Man 2023 20, or whatever. Oh, yes. Him. Um, yeah. You got Iron Lad, kind of. That's right. Who's also on the Exiles at the moment. Yeah. I mean, just the Exiles versus Maestro is fun, and again, in a story they might very well tell. That's like inevitable. It's not yeah. even like a like a pipe dream. You um, gotta go there at some point. I do like X twenty three. I like seeing her, uh, particularly as Wolverine. Um, I would like to see her being used more, or at least becoming more of a fixture, like a Marvel fixture. Uh, 
Indeed. Um, it looked like she was going to be for a second. Then they got the rights back, and they're like, okay. Get out. Um, Time to take your costume away and make you X-23, which I'm fine with making her X-23 again, but let her keep the costume. The costume is too good to get rid it, of. As it turns out, that yellow and blue suit looks better on a woman than it does on yes, Wolverine. It does. <laughs> yes, it does. And they even tried to ruin that, too. Where it's like, ooh, now here's your X-Force variant. No, no, okay, we'll g- bring you back to yellow and black. Yeah, please. Um no, oh, yeah, she's cool. And a, and, a, and a well-utilized character with a lot of growth. Then they made another one, the Honey Badger character. Yes, Honey Badger. I'm like... Which which felt like, okay, but we're going to have a kid version of it in the Logan movie. Can you do a kid version? Because Tom Taylor's a good writer. I can do a kid version, and I can actually make it better. Right. Yeah, no. Uh, that character's cool. I'm just... I don't like derivative characters. I don't like... I know you don't. That's a real I, button for you. X-23 works really well, particularly when you make her her own character. Um, I don't want to see her relegated into, like, being X-23. I'm jilted and miserable. Like what they did with Echo, where she yeah. was an Avenger, and then she was nothing. Yeah. That's totally a thing. Oh, hey, also, as the chat was mentioning, too, for our Battle of Time Lords, yeah. Kang versus Maestro versus Cable. You throw Cable in there, Cable. too. Cable's our character. Cable's our, like, our ride-along character because he's the good guy. Yeah. Absolutely. And he's got to try and save time from from these evil Jagoff. Dude, that'd be cool. Yeah. And have him fight in the Days of Future Past universe or whatever. There you go. We uh, we mentioned Taskmaster. What about Taskmaster versus Karnak? How would that fight go? Oh, that'd be really cool. I think you- Karnak would be one step ahead of him. Mm. You because- copy me, I copy you copying me. Right, exactly. <sighs> Be a mo- just call it like Mobius. Yeah, or does that fight just never end? Do they just keep doing that forever? Yeah, that'd be some say they're fighting to this day. <laughs> you can hear them <laughs> on cold nights if you listen very carefully. Yeah, I'd be totally okay with that. Um, and of course, as a shout out for Tiffany, let's let's. Tr- I'm trying to think of something with Sword, um, just a cool organization. Yeah. Um, I guess Sword versus Hydra would be fun. Yeah, if you were do just some to more. do teams. Um, it's more evil organization cool, stuff. Like, I mean, we I pitched a Space Doctor Strange a while back, and then they're doing it. And then they ended up... I swear someone in editorial watches our show, because too many ideas we pitched have come to pass. I talked about Daredevil becoming mayor, and he became mayor. I know! That's nuts! No, hey, um, whoever's watching, thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> all, <laughs> yeah, thank all, we you. Ask, all we ask is you draw us into the next one. <laughs> Seriously, I would love to see that. Are you kidding me? Just go, oh no! I'll even get crushed by a rock. I don't care. <laughs> That's fine. That's cool. I'll, I'll be a hostage in a bank robbery. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but but trying to think of like some some mix up for Doctor Strange that isn't yeah, just yeah. Doctor Doom again. It's, it's seen difficult, that a lot. Isn't it? Um mm. I guess, you know, I mean, yeah. If you want to I mean, get Doctor Strange out of there entirely, well, any cool villain would be a rockin' Herald of Galactus. Magneto, Herald of Galactus. Doctor there Strange, Herald of Galactus. Doctor Doom, Herald oh, of Galactus. Holy shit. That's um, some good shit. But, uh, I mean, if he is going to space, I'm sure it's only a matter of time till he eventually has to fight Thanos because he's like the end boss of space. Right. I guess I'd like to see... If, if, if you have to do something really, really rad that isn't just the end-all, be-all, it's going to destroy the universe, I would have it be Doctor Strange versus the Enchantress. Oh, that's also fun because hey, I'm Asgardian, and but my magic is different than your magic. My magic's different than your magic. I'm pretty, and you like pretty ladies. Exactly. Um, I'm very much your type. I'm very much your type. Exactly. I think that'd be pretty fun. Um, I'm surprised she isn't just used as a character because I haven't seen her at all. I, I didn't read much of the Jane uh, Foster run. Was she even in there? Nope. What the crap? I guess Aaron's sitting on her for the next little bit. Apparently the next arc is going to all be about the Thor family and Boulder is going to come back and Hela's going to come back, so I'm sure we're going to see her again there. Okay, all right, that's fine then. Um, Chad had a good one too. Doctor Strange versus the Mandarin. There's one we haven't done. Yeah, the Mandarin. Man, I haven't seen the Mandarin in a long time. (laughs) No, no, they'd have to bring the Mandarin back first, but once they did, I think he'd be a good Doctor Strange foe, being like, hey, I also have a love for over-the-top facial hair, robes, and magic accoutrement. That's true. Um, Ooh, the chat kept reminding me of the gift suggesting Spawn versus Doctor Strange. Well, how about Mm. Angela versus Doctor Strange? There you go. It's close as you'll get. Exactly. Um, It kind of works. Angela's a really 
they did some really cool shit with her. Nothing better than 1602 Witch Hunter Angela, but I would like to see them do something with her. Mm-hmm. Hell, make her the Herald of Galactus. Yeah, that's fine. That's a good uh, promotion. I mean, she's going to be in the new Thor book, I think, too, because they're doing the Thor family, and I just remembered she's part of the Thor family. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. Um, Alex M., have a WWE-style <laughs> Iron Man match where Tony Stark in the Hulkbuster just nice. runs a gauntlet of high-strength villains. I like, and you call it Iron Man match because that's an actual match type. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you got the Juggernaut, you got Colossus, you got all the big strong guys. Yeah, that'd be fun. And there's more, like, big, strong bruiser guys in Marvel than there is DC. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, there are. Who, who I don't know like, why that is. I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's hard to find someone in DC who's just strong. Right? No, that's true. You have to, you have to rack your brain for them. Uh, Harvest really Fang do. suggesting infamous Iron Doom or Iron Man Doom versus the Superior Octopus. We mentioned that. that that's like, where's that? It's coming. Like, that's probably going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Hornpile Phoenix, Laura versus Mysterio to show that she is the better Wolverine. Again, Laura versus anybody and Mysterio versus anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Mysterio lends himself to anybody. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Well, uh, as you can see, some of these are super fun. I would like to see a bunch of these. Um, particularly anybody with, like, drawing skills. Show us your favorite. Yeah, really. <laughs> Cause, uh, Please do. Fan art it up. We love fan art. I remember when we did that huge DC versus Marvel crossover, and I, just, I came across uh, that amazing Flash Ghost Rider uh, crossover, and I was like, mm-hmm. the, the dude sent me the original pencils. I'm like, this is going up. Uh, now that we have the studio and everything, this is a really cool image, and I would love to see more of these things put into, in, into reality. It's pretty slick. Um, but thank you so much for hanging out with us. And let us know in the comments down below or in the comments if you're listening to this episode audio-wise. Um, which, uh, what's your favorite matchup crossover uh, within the Marvel Universe itself? I'd like to hear your suggestions in the comments. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will uh, we'll join you next time with another episode. This hour did, surprisingly enough, go by just as they always do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who'd have thought? And how. Right? Uh, but we want to thank you all so much for hanging out with us, and we'll see you guys next week with another episode of the Elseworlds Exchange. Um, that's it, I guess. I'm Sal. Yeah, I'm Joel. Thanks for hanging. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I said bye weird.